All right, so I think most everybody knows we started last week with our five easy T sew along. If you're not familiar, we're doing a five easy T sew along. Uh, we have kits available on the website with French Terry. We also have um, a few other fabrics in stock. They just don't come in the kit. And it's our, again, five easy T pattern. The kit will give you everything you need to make the shirt, including the pattern, or you could buy what you need a la carte. Yeah, you'll need two types of um, iron-on tapes, a stay tape, a straight, super fine, straight stay tape, and then a double-sided uh, tape for the hems. And you'll need some clear elastic. And all, like Jessica said, all of that comes in the kit. Um, then you'll need the yard and a half to a yard and three quarters of the knit fabric, if you're buying a la carte, and of course the five easy T pattern. So once we put it all in the kit, there'll be far more tape and elastic than you need. So you'll have that for other projects, but we discounted it by 25%. So buying it all in a bundle um, is your most economical if you don't already have the pattern and some of the other items. If you need all those items, your best bet really is the kit. Yeah, and the kits are available. I just put the link on the uh, in the comments for our kits page because uh, I want. There are two different sizes for the kits. The two X and three X come together in its own kit, and all the other sizes are in a kit. Um, Very in small the other, to two X in the other kit. So I just gave you the link to the kits page so you can make sure to find the right size for you. And um, did we get yesterday's newsletter on the archive? Yes, the archive, um, our website under newsletter has um, all of our archived newsletters um, with content. With content. And, you know, not just sale announcements or stuff like that, but if there is actual um, sewing education content in there or we're working uh, with our. So along here, those are archived on the website under newsletter. Now Becky is asking um, a hey, good Becky. question, I think. So we had done the Knit Fit yes. series, mm -hmm. and she's asking, do you think we will, uh, okay, so it's a little, do you think we can make the five easy tees successfully without making the Knit Fit first? Well, of course that's possible, absolutely. Um, thousands of people have I can tell you that but um, if you have any shoulder slope issues any rounding to your back or forward leaning shoulders I highly recommend you do the knit fit first because then you can add where you need to to the pattern and change the shape and slope of your shoulder seam so you'll have an excellent t-shirt now if you had never heard about the knit fit and you made up a t-shirt, uh, you'd probably be happy. Knit is very forgiving, but for the consummate custom fit t-shirt, then yes, go do the knit fit first. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to know that the knit fit kit uses the bodice sloper, the exact same bodice sloper that we use to create the 5EZT pattern. So once you've done that knit fit the, and you superimpose your sloper over top of that 5EZTs, it's going to be a slam dunk. There's going to be so, it'll be so easy to make whatever corrections and then know that it's going to hang right. But if you don't have uh, most of those issues or any of them, then absolutely um, the t shirt. Again, like I said, it is so forgiving because it's knit. And, well, yeah, uh, and Mary Smith says uh, that she made it just fine. Uh, this pattern was out before we even had um, Connie's right. slopers that we had. Um, we're selling them. Selling we were them. using them, but we yeah. were selling them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so obviously hundreds, if not thousands, of people have made it without that. Yeah. But um, it's just personal preference. If you'd like to find out, um, make that sloper first and find any 
you know, tweaks and stuff, then I would do that first, but it's not necessary. Yeah. If you know you've got fit issues, you know, you'll know if you do or you don't. <laughs> and if you do, take that extra time to do the knit fit. Uh, Joanne, we do ship to the UK. If you have um, specific questions on that, you can email us, islandersewing at comcast.net, and Brenda can help you with that. But we do ship to the UK. If you want to know approximate charges, we need an address. Because um, I just had someone this morning, and I said, Brenda, she wants to know how much it costs to ship to the UK. She says, well, I have to have an address because it can make a, make a difference. So send her your address as well, please. Um, okay, I know that we touched on this either last episode or the episode before, but I cannot remember... Um, specifically, if we talked about Sandy wants to know what's the proper way to modify it to a long sleeve. Oh, yeah, we did talk about that. Okay. And, um, and I talked about that a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about um, sleeves. But basically, whenever you want, you've got a pattern and it doesn't have the type of sleeve you want, whether it's the length or the width or whatever you always want to honor the sleeve cap. So you're going to take the short sleeve sleeve cap or the three quarter length sleeve cap, lay that down and then take the long sleeve that's in the pattern that has the little cutout at the shoulder and lay it on top of that one, making it match up at the underarm. And you take those two pattern pieces and make them into one pattern piece. I hope that makes sense. Let us know, if Sandy, if that doesn't make and sense. And I did explain it last week in the beginning of last week's uh, video, and I've explained it before. So if that didn't, you know, uh, review last week's, and I'm sure it'll all come clear. But basically, all the way to the underarm within the seam allowance, you want to maintain that sleeve that fits in that underarm, and then you add on from down. Basically, all you'd have to do is go from the underarm and just taper it down. But if you're not used to drafting a sleeve and you're not sure what width you want at the bottom, it's better to use um, the sleeve that's in there. Anything else before we get started? Not yet, but if you have questions, always um, feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, last week, we started... Um, with Janet showing you about cutting, marking. Uh-oh, it says video interrupted. Can anybody see or hear us? No, we got nothing. We'll give it a second. Well, we'd have it, it says had we're live on here, but on my computer it says we're interrupted. So Brenda, I don't want to give. Check our Facebook feed. All right, let's see. It says that we're live, so hopefully that was okay. So let's just make sure that. People are here with us. Uh, give us a thumbs up. We had a little interrupt. Just, oh, there's okay. one. Okay, okay, good. We're back on track. Uh, I'll still just give it a second in case people are refreshing their feed. Like I had to do. Okay. So we talked about, last week we talked about cutting, marking, uh, making neckline adjustments is because some people would prefer it to be a little higher um, and some people would like it to be a little lower maybe. And Janet showed you how to apply the different tapes to the hem and to the shoulder up here. So if you did not see that, you can go back and watch it in our videos on the Facebook, on our Facebook page. You just click videos and they're there in chronological order, starting with the most recent first. And all of the exact same directions are in the pattern guide. 
So we're going right along the pattern guide. So you can always pull that out and uh, follow along with the written directions if that's easier for you. Okay, so that's what we talked about last week. And today we will be moving over to the sewing machine. Well, yes, we will. All right. Now, before we get to the sewing machine, I want to make sure that everybody is up to date. So go through the pattern guide and it'll show you where to apply the tapes according to whatever sleeve you're using. You may need to apply more or less. Um, we will not be covering the peekaboo sleeve. We're going to do a full. I'm gonna, The one I'm making is the three-quarter length, just like the one that's behind me. So it has a three quarter length sleeve. Uh, for me, that's the one I make the most. I feel like it's the most versatile. But um, you make whichever one you want. Just know that I'm not covering the peekaboo concept during the sew along. I'll be doing the full sleeve. Um, so you should have your tapes in your back shoulder. You should have your hems of your sleeve, front and back, all have the double face tape applied to them and press have them pressed up as a hem. Um, now, last week, someone asked about the faux cover hem, and I did uh, cover that in that newsletter because I misspoke. So the question was, do you put the tape on before, just like you do with the cover hem, if you're planning on a cover hem, or a full cover hem? And the answer is no. I said yes, no. Oops. You want to serge finish the raw edge of all your hems. And then you're going to press it up with the tape. Then at the end, you'll be doing the twin needle. And I will cover uh, a little bit and some tips on using the twin needle to get the same look and the same effect as a cover hem. It's a two-step process instead of a one-step process, but for all intents and purposes, it looks exactly the same. So if you don't have a cover hem, you can still have that same uh, fine ready-to-wear finish on your t-shirt rather than using um, a straight stitch. And by all means, never use a zigzag to hem your t-shirt. That is, I've seen that as advice by some well-meaning home sewing teachers, and it is really bad idea because what happens as you're zigzagging, you know the feed dog are moving, moving, that fabric is stretching, stretching, stretching. And when you get done putting your hem in with that little zigzag stitch, you very likely could have a hem that is now three inches wider than it was supposed to be. And it will always ripple at the bottom. You have a ripply bell shirt. And the teacher who was recommending that and held up her t-shirt, it was rippled. But I don't know. She didn't notice it or she didn't care. Or she didn't know there was a better way is what I, I can imagine. But um, I'm here to tell you as a home sewer, you can get the same finishes as you see in fine ready to wear. It's just you just have to know how to do them, and that's what we teach. So that's what we're going to do today. I did put the link for that latest newsletter right in the comments. So if you want to see it, um, the written, what Janet wrote about it, um, or go back on it, it's in the comments. And before anybody asks, that's a three thread. So you're going to three thread uh, search the raw edges of the hem. Um, and we always use a three thread when we're not constructing, when we just want to finish the edge. The fourth thread is generally because you want to create an actual seam that's going to lay nice. Um, and so that's why the fourth thread's applied. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So give them an idea of what you're going to start with or what you're going to go over um, today at the sewing machine. Sure. And we'll move over there. Yeah, we're going to start right from the beginning. So if you've got your book... And I always encourage you to have that book sitting there. I know you've got me and I'm explaining everything. But if you have that book sitting there and I say something that you want to remember, 
you can put that note right in the margin on that book, right where we're talking about it, and then you won't lose it. You and clarify, but book, she's meaning pattern guide, because our pattern guides come in a little booklet format. So it's not any sort of special book that you need, <laughs> yeah. just the pattern guide just that's the pattern. in the yeah. book format. Mm -hmm. So yeah, keep that with you. Write your notes as we go along because you don't need to be sewing at the same time as us. No. But watch, make your notes, and you can go back. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and we will do our best to address them. I never imagined someone would try to sew right along, actually. Literally I don't think so, so either. But, but if you are, God bless you. But I think you're better served to watch it twice and then mm -hmm. repeat it than to try and do it. Um, while you're but watching. But even it. I highly doubt anyone would do it live, more likely later, you know, because you can pause yeah. and restart. But even then, just like a, a, a recipe, when you're cooking, you want to read the whole thing through, you oh. want to watch the whole lesson, and go back. When I was smart smoking that pork butt this weekend, I must have read that recipe 10 times because mm -hmm. I would like, oops. And I go back, and Oops. it's like, so I got the uh, 225. No, it says 275. So, yeah, reread, reread. Yep. For me, uh, it was several times. So Okay, so you ready to move over, get started? Um, um, I think so. I think so. On applying the elastic, correct? Yeah. All right. Uh, what is the dark shirt behind Jessica? This is the, this is the 5 Easy T. It's the um, three-quarter length. So that's what Janet is making for the sew-along. This is the 5 Easy T as well. It's just the short sleeve. This one over here, if you're talking about that, that's the Islander shirt. So hopefully that helps, Mary. If not, tell me. All right, so we're going to move over. Just do a little walk over here. And it looks like she's ready. Well, oh, nice. oh, I mean, as ready as she gets, guys. <laughs> well, I have my optimizer ready. As I've shared with many of you, um, Oops, sorry, guys. I have limited, I have sight issues. And one of my eyes has only got 20% vision. So for many years, I've used the optimizer so I could keep sewing. And so if you're having trouble with uh, sewing black on black or you're having trouble sewing at night because you just can't quite see or you're just having some problems as you age with uh, sight this is an excellent excellent tool and I used it for many years before I started selling it as well but we do have it on the website but the nice thing about it is it works with bifocals any kind of glasses it is literally just a magnifying glass but if you use a handheld magnifying glass, one thing is one of your hands is occupied. Secondly, you have to kind of move it back and forth until you get things in right in focus. Well, the same thing is true with this. So when I pull this down over my glasses, I have to be a certain distance for everything to be in focus. So if I look up and try to look across the room, everything is blurry when I have this on, but that's why it's so nice that it'll just flip up out of my way. So, that's why I have this silly thing on my head. So, I'm stuck. Here's our pattern guide book that we talked about. And I am starting here on page 15. But just prior to that, well, actually I'm going to start on 13 because we got to do a little prep work. So, I'm going to explain the prep work here. So, what we want to do is mark the center front. And we did go over that slightly last week as far as marking how far down we want to, um, there's a little dot for each size. So we mark that by sticking a pin through the pattern onto the fabric and making a chalk mark. Then I've taken my little six inch ruler and my chalkener and I've made a line straight down the center front past where I want to be. Then I've crossed that this is my exact stop point, that dot on the pattern. And I've made a very long line at that point. So that's what it looks like. And if you can't see it as well on there, you'll be able to see it in your pattern guide. 
and I would come past this. In my picture, it doesn't have the line past it, but you'll see why in a second. You want it more like this. Yeah, more like a cross. But in either case, uh, you X could... X marks the spot. Right. So then we have a piece of our clear elastic, and I just probably lopped off twice as much as I need, but um, and I don't recommend you do that, but this is what it is. It's just a clear elastic. Um, so we're going to apply the elastic to our front of our shirt by anchoring the elastic right at the center of our cross. All right, can you see that, Jess, that it's um, centered on there at all? I can. I would like to think that means they, they so. can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you, what you did, do you have a little bit over that center marking? Yes. Correct. Yeah, maybe a half inch is enough. A half inch, okay. Something similar. And then she's sinking her needle right where those two lines meet. In the center of the elastic. In the center of the elastic. And if you have extra elastic back here, no problem. You can cut it off later. Okay, so um, what I want to do is anchor this with a couple of stitches. Okay, now let me get my measurement. I think it's two and a half, but let me not make a mistake for you and confuse everybody. Okay, so... Two and a half inches. So we're gonna mark from that to two and a half on the elastic, not on the shirt, on the elastic. So I'm gonna take my ruler. And let's see, let's grab my ash pen. And I wanna come down, and I found that the gel pens work on here pretty well. I, I'm not sure the chalkener will stay on the elastic. So I have a two and a half inch mark here. And honestly, you could, if you're very careful, you could actually use any kind of marker just to make a dot at that two and a half mark. So you see where that is now? Can you mm -hmm. see it? Yeah. All right. So I want that mark to be up here at the raw edge. So I've got my stitching anchored, and now I'm going to stretch that to the raw edge of the fabric and stitch down the center of the elastic. that's all there is to it. You see that? Well, let's look at it from the front. Now I can trim some of this off. I'll get my little tailor points out here. And I'll trim off. Now don't trim it all off. Leave it maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch there at the end. And of course this can come off. And now we have that very pretty ruching. It's just that easy. Mary Jackson is asking, if you don't have clear elastic, can you use narrow elastic? No. That's it? Okay, Mary, if you use regular quarter inch elastic, even the pajama elastic, it's going to be too thick and bulky, and it's going to be an eyesore right there. You want something that's almost not there, and that's what's so great about this elastic. Um, is just almost not there. It's so nice and fine and transparent. And, yeah, I would not use a braided or uh, woven elastic for that. Um, so anyways, and it's a pretty inexpensive thing to have, and it works well in a lot of other areas. I think when you go back to the Knit Fit, and I did some t-shirts for my granddaughter, and we did a yoke where the whole front of the shirt was gathered across here. I used the elastic in the same way, so I didn't have to run all the gathering stitches. I just measured and stretched it and stitched it down, and it gathered that whole front of that shirt up. So there's lots of uses for the clear elastic, you'll find. It also makes a great stay tape. Okay.
Um, yeah. So last week we prepared our binding by pressing it in half and we found that uh, using the clapper kind of helped encourage it. And of course I kept it laying flat and didn't mess with it because it can come unfolded pretty easily because knits don't hold a crease that well. But right now what I want to do is I want to sew this in half so I want, or sew this in half, sew this seam in the center back so I have to unfold it to do that. And I believe that's a 3 8 inch seam but let me confirm it for you. And now we're going to be on page 15 and it's a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And you'll notice in our pattern guides we're going to tell you in each step what is the seam allowance that you're going to take for each step because we do not subscribe to the all seam allowances are 5 8 um, foolishness. So what we want to do is after we've unfolded this is just stitch it at 3 8 and then eventually it's going to go back over to Can the... Can we see you how you have that unfolded and everything? Yep. So the whole thing was folded. Okay. And now you've met the ends met and opened it. Opened it. And get them as even and clean and straight and matching up as you possibly can. And this would be a place where even a person who uses pins should not use a pin. It's just going to distort things and get in your way, as pins do. Okay, so now I have the 3 8 inch seam allowance. And... Oh, well, look at that. It came, came right back out. Hmm, it backed up. I don't know what happened there. Really? Really? Um, Mary, we do sell the elastic on the website. It comes in the kit, or you can buy it on its own, just like the stay tapes. Okay, talk among yourselves while I rethread my machine. See if there's any other questions. Yeah, the elastic comes in a seven-yard package, and usually you only use a few inches at a time, so you'll have a nice supply. But once I started using the clear elastic, I found a lot more uses for it. So I think you will too. Um, and it's quite inexpensive. You want to be careful not to get anything heavier than the 12 millimeter. That's the thickness of the elastic, not the width. Um, because we don't, again, want that heaviness here. We just want a soft ruching. Is it your bobbin? No. I thought Brenda threaded a bobbin. No. What do I want? Well, you already sewed the elastic on, so. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, the table, the cabinet. Where's your cabinet from again? Oh, um... Koala. Koala, that's right. The koala cabinet, Marcy, we have done an episode um, talking quite a bit about that topic, but you can let them know what machine you have and uh, they have the proper inserts to match. There's several different colors, a laminate. You can customize so much of it. So. You can make it fit your needs. Yay! We have a seam. That wasn't hard at all. No. <laughs> Who knew that would be such a problem? All right. So, um, this is just going to get refolded. And I'll give this a good press back here so it stays. Um, but I will tell you that a seamstress in a garment factory doesn't do any pressing. So, this would just 
go over and be stitched down. It wouldn't be a problem. But she also knows how to handle it. All right, so now what we want to do is put our shoulder seams in. So we have the back here that we've already applied the 3 8 inch, or the, yeah, the, the super fine tape to. And again, that's only in the back shoulder seam, not the front. Now I'm going to go over to the so serger and I'm going to use a four thread and I'm going to stitch these seams. Now you can flip those buttons on the back of that, or if you don't, if you can't, you can. Okay, so get these lined up. So this is a 3 8 inch seam, and your serger is usually set at about a quarter, so you are going to be trimming a little bit off here. I'll get the other side ready to go in. Now, if you can't get a cabinet for your serger, by all means, get an extension table because you need that table surface for a serger just as much as a sewing machine, if not more. Now you can see that our aim was just to catch this right here in the seam. So it's not beyond the seam. So we did pretty good. This little bit's not gonna hurt a thing. So if you have one of these little guys, that's eh, all right. Okay, so we wanna press um, these seams to the back and press that little uh, back seam of our neck band. Let me do that real quick. Carolyn is wondering, sorry guys, don't get dizzy. Carolyn is wondering, is it necessary to remove the needle when switching from a four thread to a three thread? No, I don't. Well, that's my answer. <laughs> I Technically, don't. not sure, but she doesn't. No, it, here's the thing. In some fabrics, it'll continue to make a little hole. So it depends on the fabric you're using. But I'm just too lazy because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to do a three thread and then I want to maybe go back to a four. So I don't like taking the needle out. So I don't and I'm quite successful at it. So I guess it's a personal thing. How about everybody else? Does anybody else do that? Got those seams pressed. And we'll just press this real quick. It only needs just this one spot back here to be encouraged. There we go. All right. Back to the sewing machine. Now I will tell you that you could put this band in if you have the skills with the serger. All right, so Pamela says that she has, but she says, but I'm new to this and lazy. Now I have no guilt. Oh, good, good. Marlene says she always removes it. Okay. Kathy doesn't. 
Mary does just because of the tiny holes. Sherry doesn't. Gertrude does. All right, so we got about 50-50. 50-50, that's cool. Well, you know, it's just preferences, right? And when it's your hobby, you should go with what makes you comfortable. All right, now what I want you to see is, is I'm going to, rather than last week we talked about the mark on the pattern that will give you uh, a registration mark on the neckline to sew, uh, to match the um, neckband up to, but I prefer to do the old stretch and sew method, so I don't ever mark that. I just divide my neckline into quarters and my neckband into quarters. So what I'm doing right here is I'm folding it in half with that center back right here. So now I know this is the center front and I'm gonna mark it with a pin. Okay, then by matching up the center back and the center front, I have the quarter marks. And this is so we get it evenly distributed across the neckline because the neckband is slightly smaller than the neckline in order to pull it in and have it cup up against the body. So there's our four quarter neck band. Okay, so there it is. I don't have a pin back here because guess what? It's got a seam. I know where that mark is. All right, so then on the actual shirt, on the t-shirt here, we have center back. Center back because I put a little nip in it. Remember I told you, don't pull on that. And we've got center front where the elastic is. So all we have to do is match these two up and we'll come up with our quarter mark. Now make sure you lay it nice and flat and make sure the raw edges all get lined up. And then you'll know that you've got exactly that quarter mark, which is right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And again, you could use the marks on the pattern because they, they are absolutely where they should be as well. On knits, I like marking with pins. There's nothing to have to take out later. I don't have to worry about it showing or rubbing off. So now I have my quarter marks for my neckline. And you'll see at the top of page 16, what we're doing here. So here's 16. And so we want to match these pins up. So here's our center back. And I've got that little notch there. So I'm going to pin that in. Yes, I am using a pin. This is where pins are very come in very handy. So then we just want to match up the pins as we go around. Now make sure you keep your uh, band straight. Don't let it get twisted because that will be very sad once you've got it on and then you realize you twisted it. Nobody wants to have to do that. So this one will go right here at the center of the ruching. One will match with this pin. Okay, now we're ready to put it in. Everybody with me? Any questions? All right, so I'm going to straight stitch this in. Again, you could serge it. However, it is such a narrow seam and you've got to be stretching while you're doing it. Most of us aren't that comfortable doing this at the serger. 
So even I always do this uh, straight stitch first. So I like to start at the back. So we're going to anchor that center back and we're going to take a quarter inch seam allowance. And let me double check myself. Mm -mm. Quarter inch. Thank you, Jessica. All right, quarter inch. Linda's asking, how much shorter is the band than the neckline? Well, it's approximately seven eighths of the neckline length. So it's a percentage. You go by a percentage. But it depends on the knit. Some knits need a little smaller, some need a little wider, depending on their stretchability. But a t-shirt knit, this usually works pretty good. Now what we wanna do is stretch this as we stitch it at a quarter of an inch. Now remember, keep everything lined up and your raw edges need to be even. So don't, I mean, take your time on this because if this neckband gets, goes in and out and is wider and thinner, it's going to show because it frames your face. It's around your, you know, your neckline. So this is a place that you want to be nice and accurate. Slight stretching, like we said, it's only seven eighths uh, uh, of the neckband, so it's only an eighth shorter. So it's not a lot of stretching, just a little bit. Gertrude asks if you are basting or sewing. I'm sewing. We are the Islander method. We are sewing. So, yes, she's using a straight stitch. And what is the stitch length? Well, um, this one I think I have at three and a half. I always take um, uh, some of the fabric ahead of time. And before I start the project, take two layers of it and stitch on it and come up with what I think is the best stitch for that fabric. Sometimes you have to adjust tension, but generally just stitch length. And that's what you adjusted over there, they're asking. Mm -hmm. Stitch yep. length. Yeah, stitch it, stitch it length. had been set too long. It was on uh, four and a half, and that's too long. All right, so Sandy is asking. When I'm sewing my neckband on for my boy's t-shirt, the top of the neckband just isn't laying flat. flat. It's driving me crazy. Any ideas? It, and when she says the top of it, does she mean the folded edge? It's kind of curling out. It's not laying close to the body. Let us know, Sandy. I think I know that's probably it, and I know what to tell her. Let me make sure. Yes. Okay, so your band is too big. So take a... It's too yeah. wide. You need too a long. Get long. So what I would do with a sample is maybe take a quarter of an inch off of that band and then sew it in. It's going to be a small amount. It doesn't take much to make that difference of whether it you probably have seen them. I've seen people on Facebook go, what did I do wrong? And they've got this t-shirt pattern and their whole band is curled out and just laying out there. Well, the band is too big. So just go in increments until you get it. And I don't know what kind of knit you're using, Sandy. Um, each knit has its own stretch index. 
some have a lot of recovery, some have very little recovery, and that will make a difference. So just do a test, and once you get it, you'll know. Okay, so we've got our banding. And what I like to do is kind of double check it to make sure that I didn't get it crooked before I go and serge it. So that's what our band looks like, looks pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and I'm going to three thread serge this raw edge before I top stitch it down. So we'll go back over to the serger and we'll pull a thread, but not a needle. I never do. It's so interesting somebody asked that because I always think, oh, I probably should take that needle out, but I don't want to take the time, so I don't ever do it. Let's grab the number. Hey, right over there, can you, let me think, let me get this. asking are you doing three thread wide or three thread narrow I'm doing narrow and you don't have a lot of work there a lot to work with there it's only a quarter inch seam allowance so I'd stay narrow when I started out my machine was still set at four thread with only three threads so if you ever get these loops going over the edge that's probably why so all you have to do is make whatever adjustment your machine needs to be made Mine is just a matter of changing this dial from A to B, and then it doesn't flip over. It looks real nice. And Gertrude asks, why are you using three thread? Well, because I don't need four. See, the four thread, Gertrude, makes the straight stitch seam. If you just serge three threads and you tried to press a seam, you'd see there was spaces in that seam where it wasn't stitched together. But when you do that four thread, it in effect gives you the same effect as a straight stitch. So you have right. a uh, respectable seam. So she, seam like she time. said, when she sewed the neckband on, she could have done it with the four thread. But I'm not. But I, she doesn't I, recommend that. But that's when you'd use the four thread. Okay, so now all we want to do is just serge finish this and try not to catch anything in, in there. So we just want to get our raw edges of our band. Now I could do a four thread and it wouldn't hurt anything, but I'd have to be careful that I wasn't compromising the straight stitching that I've already done. In other words, skewing the, uh, the appearance on the right side. Serge finished that raw edge. And this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to go press it into place so we can top stitch it. And Roseanne asks Is there a reason the band is that narrow? Um, well, that's what I wanted when I designed the pattern, so that's the reason. You can make it a little bit wider, 
And you could vary them uh, just by cutting the band wider. You could only go about so wide, but you know, you can't like do a two inch wide or something. Probably shouldn't be pressing on this without a pressing cloth. <laughs> Get rid of that shine there. So I guess I'll switch over to two pieces of cloth. I love a silk organza for a pressing cloth because I can see exactly what I'm doing. So I just take like a half a yard and serge the edge and uh, use it till it gets all nasty, throw it out and get another piece. Before okay. we move, do you know where you got that bin? This bin right here? Yeah. I got it at Target last year. There you go. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to top stitch. And the reason we're top stitching is, as you can see, this wants to tip a little bit. Um, it's not going to roll out like we were talking about if it was too big, but it, it doesn't lay flat. So we want to nail this down. So we want to be stitching right in this area right here, not all the way to this edge, but not right on the fold either. We want to be out here a little ways, so we're nailing that seam down so it doesn't roll and pitch. So again, I'm going to start at the back. And this is where you probably want to use some indication from your foot as to the width you want to make this seam. So I'm going to try something here. If I lay my foot right on the edge, right on the ditch of that seam, I think I'm going to have what I, the look I want. So let me just give it a shot here. Sherry's saying the pattern guide says there's a step before top stitching. Uh-oh. Is it the, yeah, she's right. I was supposed to be doing that. Okay, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is make the V. So this is what Sherry's talking about. And you're going to see this, and there's even uh, a enlarged version of it right here on page 17. But we want to stitch down that okay so we want to be folded right on this stitching here and then what we want to do is we're going to stitch about a quarter of an inch in from here and come right down at an angle to create this triangle right here now it's really important that you keep these folded edges close together. If that's a problem for you, let me show you a little tip, because they will slide around on you. So maybe you wanna baste them together. So what I might do So I basted them together so they can't slide around on me. Sherry, thank you so much. You don't know how many times I've made this t-shirt and done that the same thing and I get all the way to here and go, oh no. So 
so you saved me thank you if they get all the way to there and realize they didn't do it is it too late um well you got to do it but could they do it then and then go back to the top stitching well the problem with that is is that you have to be a real master in order to not have that show where you stopped and started in that top stitching mm -hmm. and on a knit ugh. and now you're in the front yeah and on a knit you know woven fabric is more forgiving when it comes to something like that all right so let's see so and I will tell you that I get this about probably 90% of the time but not a hundred <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to come Where's my little... I carried it away. I'm so bad about that. Okay. I want to come about a quarter of an inch in. Do you see that? It's a quarter of an inch in. Slip my needle there. And tilt it toward this. Now I want to make sure and seal that. Oops. see how we did see and it's still kind of twisted on me I don't think you probably can't see it because it's not a lot but it's um, a little bugger this is such a short all right I didn't get it so let me show you how not to do it you, do, you want this to match to this. Do you see that? And I didn't get it. So I have got to go back and redo that. What? Oh. Well, give me a sec. This is the hard part, ripping out and knit. Don't want to have to do that too often. <laughs> Sherry said, I'm so glad I'm not the only one that misses that darn V. It is something that you just don't do every day. But it's so important. It will, it, it's tiny, but it makes a big difference. Too bad we don't have like some hold music to play while you sit with that. Yeah. I was on hold a lot yesterday and they had this music that was just in a loop and it was so annoying. Oh my god. Like the same song? The same, yeah, and it was just drums and a guitar. Like background elevator music, but the same thing over and over again. And that was that one where I had to call three times. All right, let's see if we can try to make sure these are going to match this time. So I'm going to stick it kind of through here. Oh, Brenda, you do not want to hear me sing. Ah. <laughs> My voice is bad enough. Is everybody on the edge of their seats? 
Hey, listen, my record uh, for having to do this is four times. Four okay. times? Let's not beat that record. All right. I'll try not to. Well, this one is pretty good. Yeah. I'd say I'm a hair off right there on that side. But I'm not going to make people wait. Okay. Let's see what it looks like here in the grand scheme of things. So, there we go. Um, they're asking about basting. Could you ba baste it on the line where Janet is sewing? And yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You could baste it. Whatever. It's such a small thing. Whatever will make it less aggravating. Like I said, I've had to do it as many as four times to get it just right, and I didn't like that. So now we're back to top stitching the neck band. Get down here, it's important that you're going to stop right in that um, stitching. And then turn. Um, did you use a different stitch length for this top stitching? Pamela's asking. No, I got it at three and a half. Three and a half still, Pamela. The idea here is the reason we turn like that is so that we can echo that V. So can you see that? We've echoed that V and that also, you know, makes a nice look. So for those of you that might be interested in a little wider band, this band is cut at one inch wide and folded in half. So if you wanted a little bit wider, I would cut it at one and a quarter. That will only make it an eighth of an inch wider. So maybe like this much wider. and lower the presser foot with your foot pedal with my knee it's with her knee she has a um, I forget what that's called. a knee lift a knee lift but it doesn't lift your knee it lifts your foot you just with push. Your knee. you just push <laughs> okay so here we are there's our beautiful Ta -da. we're halfway done so next week we'll finish we'll put the sleeves in the side seams and the hem all right why don't you bring that over with us in case there's questions on that specifically okay and turn these back over
hair. Uh, no, it's not bad. At least they saw you wearing it, so it makes sense. Um, I did have a question I need to go back and find, so... If you have any uh, questions on it, feel free to put them in the comments while I'm looking for that. Oh, yes. <laughs> really, this t-shirt's probably, once you get it down, I mean, your first one will take you a while, but then you could pretty much count on an hour, hour and a half, and you have another t-shirt. And at the price of good quality t-shirts, you could really, um, you know, save some money and make some beautiful t-shirts in, in the afternoon. Okay. I... Of Valerie, Valerie or Dennis, it could be, um, asks, another sewing Facebook show uses a, this is in regards to putting the neck in, mm -hmm. uses a one-to-one -one ratio for sewing, sewing the binding to the v-neck and only eases the back of the neck and I hesitate to ask Janet Janet what her comments are on that I saw that show any other questions she does not recommend that we don't do it that way here's the thing you want your t-shirt and I've got one on. It lays against your skin. It's being pulled in. That teacher might not understand that concept. So she's pulling it in in the back and leaving it loose in the front. Well, some of us need that to cup in more than others. And you know who you are um, because sometimes your t-shirts are gapping or they're flopping. These won't do that that everything is eased in. If you go back to stretch and sew, you go to any garment factory, they're not just stretching in the back and not the front. It needs to be equally aligned. Yes? I don't know. I was just thinking it through in my head, and but I don't know. Because I like, if you think about it, why would you stretch it only in the back? Because you don't see the back? So does that mean you don't want the back so it's okay if the back doesn't look as good? Because that doesn't seem like... No, the idea of... Right, that's what I'm And saying. I think that's like, you know, if you saw the newsletter, you saw that um, a lovely lady by the name of Flo wrote and was saying how much she appreciated what I was explaining. Flo is on today. Hi, Flo. And the fact that there are so many groups or people out there that she termed the blind leading the blind. We are not disparaging those people. We are not making fun of those people. Do not get this twisted. But we are saying they, they aren't understanding the concepts of some things. And one of the things is, would be this concept. The concept is, is to get the shirt to hug the body and not to have a big floppy gaposis here. And so if you evenly distribute the ease around the neck, you'll have an evenly uh, cupped neckline. There is a different way to do it with woven, but there's definitely an easing that takes place to keep that to lay flat against your body all the way around the neckline. So, yeah. And I just think they don't understand that concept. And sometimes they're just trying to figure it out for themselves. And, you know, honestly, without having had the experience in the industry, people wouldn't know these things because it's not in home sewing books. Home sewing books are written by people who sew at home and figured out the best way they could for themselves. But when you go to the garment factory, like Connie worked as first pattern maker, and Margaret worked as a production specialist, then you start to understand, you know, the science of it all and the reasoning of it all. And it's not a by guess and by golly, it's a fact. So that's what we have to share and that's why we I do the neckline like that. But I was a big fan of Ann Persons and that's the way she did all her necklines. 
And if you don't know who Ann Pertzen was, she was the originator of Stretch and Sew. All right, we have a lot of people having to leave now. Um, it has been a little bit. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did I go long? Okay, a little bit, but I have two questions that okay. I think are important. And Linda is asking, if you raise the neckline, do you change where the dot is for the elastic? Well, yes. And then in that case, what you're going to want to do if you raise that neckline is, and I showed this just sort of briefly last week, but you're going to mark your seam allowance all the way around your neckline and you're going to measure it, remembering to subtract for seam allowances at the shoulder. Once you have that measurement, let's say that it's 20 inches. Then you're going to take 7 eighths of that, 20 inches, whatever 7 eighths of 20 is, that's what your finished band will be. So then you'll make your band that length, but don't forget, add seam allowance. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And then the other one, because a couple people have asked this. And that's in a previous newsletter in the archives, too, exactly how okay. to do that one. Uh, oh, okay. Um, can you show them again where the top stitching is? Like, specifically? Uh, oh, on there? Well, it doesn't have to be exactly where I put it, but the idea is that you can see... All right, you can see... Yep. All right. So I'm in just about an eighth of an inch from the, the edge. You can kind of see that that's how far in I am. So that, because I want to nail this down. Because there's so much thread on this edge, it wants to curl out. So to keep it flat, again, to keep that neckline cupped against the body. So there's about the width. It's less than a quarter. And then what Janet did is she found a guide on her sewing machine, which this happens to be her foot, or you might have your different markings on your plate. No, the plate won't help here. Well, I'm just saying you could put the tape down. You could find something you on your... You can use your chalkener and right. chalk your... Uh, you could do whatever, at whatever level, comfort level you're at. You could take that chalkener and your little ruler and go along and dot a, a seam allowance. You could use the edge of a foot, maybe the inside of the foot, depending. A lot of feet are too wide to use yep. the edge. Or a marking on the foot, or something mm -hmm. that gives Quarter yourself foot. that mark that you follow. So it doesn't have to be a specific distance. You want to make sure you're tacking that piece down so it doesn't fold out, but whatever way you can do to keep that line going straight. Or even. Even. Um, Consistent. <laughs> uh, Carol's asking, do you know the color of the thread? Because she bought the same. I'll get it for you. I knew somebody was going to ask that. She had to buy it. You had to buy it, right? Yeah, I did. I went through all this thread and I didn't have the right color. Of course. Okay. So I just went, um, Carol, to my local Joann's and I bought Guterman because it's the first rack I came to. It's a good thread. And I believe that says color 687. 687. And that's for the turquoise uh, bamboo French terry if you bought it. I used Guterman 687. 687. Okay. All right, so that um, takes up today, and then next week we'll be back on Tuesday to finish up the shirt. Yeah. So um, you could, if you're anxious, you got some place you want to wear your T-shirt this weekend, just follow along in the guide. I'm telling you, we're very, very proud of our guides. We get compliments on them all the time. So you should be able to do just fine. But you can still watch again next week because might see a few little tricks that well you could add to your repertoire so we look forward to seeing you next week and there are kits available and a little birdie told me that if ups shows up we might have some more colors on the website in a day or two <laughs> so 
So keep an eye out for that as well. But lots of kits still available. And remember, if you buy the kit, you get, you're saving 25% on all of those supplies together. All right. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.